All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Reptile Paradise, where nature thrives as we rise. In my recent video, I showed you guys how I breed house crickets and field crickets. Today, I'll be showing you guys how to breed mealworms. Mealworms, by far, are the easiest insects feeders to breed on your own. And you simply just go to, you can go to Dollar Tree and get a couple of bins, and I'll show you the bins that I have. I also have a divider for when they turn into pupa. And then I'll be going through the mealworm container that I have right now and grabbing out some pupa that I found earlier and then place them in, placing them in the organizer that I have. So you guys will see the whole process of how I do things. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so for those that are new to the channel, this is my baby bearded dragon series. And this is her custom made enclosure out of an old dresser that I had that I wasn't using and I decided to make it for her. Now down here we have two drawers. This drawer here, is where my beetles and my pupas are so i'm gonna show you the beetles because i have a ton of them in here and then we'll show you the process that i go through every day so i had them apples in here and they've been eating them up uh let's see if we can get them because they're they're normally sitting under here as you can see but there's a whole bunch of them so let's move the apples and then see if we can get them off here so you can see how many i actually have there's only a few here so there's a couple there one and already tried to burrow himself down. We got some mini beetles too. I don't know what kind of beetles they are, to be honest. They don't look like the regular darkling beetles. I think it's because they turned into pupa at a very young age. And they just came out as those little things there. Now over here on this side is where most of the beetles normally chill out at. And, we ha and I have a whole bunch of them here. As you can see, look at that look at that and this is what happens when you don't refrigerate your mealworms and i'm going to tell you a secret they say refrigerate your mealworms do not do it why it's because it's a way for you to continue to go to the pet store and buy mealworms from them when you can simply breed them on your own so those are all the beetles i have is i say it's at least close to 20 in there because some of them are buried burrowed down under the quick oats and that's another thing you can get from dollar tree quick oats and it's the very it's the easiest and the most simplest substrate to get for them you could go and get the millworm bedding from the pet store but that's about say ten dollars a pound maybe five to six dollars a pound where you can just go to dollar tree and get this right here for a dollar quick oats and I still have some left. And I have two containers filled with quick oats. So, just think about how much money you truly need to spend on breeding mealworms. Now, this is the organizer I got. Because if they hatch, if you leave them in a container completely to themselves like this. So, I put all my pupa in here. They hatch at different times. So, if they were to hatch and you don't feed them, they will definitely eat the pupa that are left behind. And you don't want that to happen because that will limit your colony. So... These are the pupa. Pupa. I don't know if I said. I, yeah, said, I said it right. Pupa. <laughs> but the substrate I have in here is all the substrate from like calcium worms and millworms that you get from the pet store itself. So that's an easy way to do that too. And then when they hatch, if you want, the best way to do it is to leave them on their backs. So when they do hatch, their their feet are facing up. That way, if you do have multiple like I do here. I have two in here. I normally put three. I have two in here. That way when they hatch, they hatch on their backs. And in this substrate, they can't turn themselves over. And you want to check this at least twice a day and every day. You definitely want to check it every day because you never know when they're going to hatch. So let's go inside the mealworm container and I'll show you guys what we have in here and how I go through this every day. So these are all my mealworms. I still got a, a a decent amount in here uh, majority of them were getting eaten by Sirius I try to go through and feed her the small ones and we have currently two people at the top these are the ones I found earlier but I wanted to leave these in here for the video today so what I normally do let's see what I normally do is I go through every day let's take the two out first you want to gently pick them up you don't want to crush the pupa itself because they'll bleed out and they won't they won't turn into beetles so be very careful when you do it and i just sit them in the middle 
And here's an actually it's three in here. There's another one. See? You want to check these every day because you never know. And you want to be careful too. Make sure you feed your millworms because if you don't feed them, they will eat the pupa. So since these are singled, basically I just leave one in there just just to be safe. And let's get this last one out of here. You could leave, you could take and put some oats in there if you want. That way when they do hatch, if they don't hatch on their backs, they have food. But I normally just let them hatch on their backs. And I normally just separate them. You want some millworms, don't you? <laughs> you want some millworms. Alright, so let's go through this and let's see if we can find some more. So what I normally do is I'll take all the quick oats and just push it all the way to one side of the container. And then once I get it to one side of the container, I just lightly with the back of my hand push it down and, and push it out to make sure that there's no other pupas in here before I put the container back. And like I said, you want to check this every day to make sure your colony is growing the way it should in that way that the uh, millworms don't eat the pupa that have turned into pupa. Because if you don't feed them, they'll eat them and we have another one here just by pushing it up we have another one you see you see what i mean you want to check this every day because i don't check this every day i will never know look at her look at her she won't hurt some millworms all right so let's open this back up now I, now that this all the single ones are full with pupa, what I'll normally do is I'll push one pupa to a corner, each corner, and then I'll put one in the middle. But who knows? We might have more than I think in here today. So let's just keep going through this. And when it comes to breeding these, you want to give whatever reptile or animal you're feeding your mealworms, you want to give them the smallest ones possible. Because the biggest ones have lived the longest, and you never know when they could turn into pupa, so you don't want to jeopardize your colony when it comes to that. And then when it comes to feeding your millworms and your beetles once they hatch, you can give them fruit, you can give them veggies, they'll eat, uh, they'll eat rotting fruit as well, but you want to take it out before it molds. And that's pretty much it when it comes to it. It's just that simple. And these bins... All this stuff I got from Dollar Tree. So, in total, I have one, two, three. That other bin down there. Then I have those four back there, which came in a pack. So, that's five. And then two, two things of quick oats. So, I spent $7 at Dollar Tree to maintain my millworm colony. And that's all it takes. It's just that simple. And then you won't have to worry about buying them again. And then I'll also go through the process of when you start to get baby mealworms. So there's no more pupa in here. I found two more. That was, that was good that I found two more. So now we're going to have extra beetles. And I'm going to remind you one last time to check. If you do this, you want to check it every day. I check it maybe two, three times a day. Because you never know what happens in those span of hours. So just keep your eye on it. It's a task. And if you want to breed them, you have to take the responsibility for it. Now, for the beetles, when they start to lay eggs and the eggs start to emerge, what you want to do is get you a separate container. I have a bug catcher. I have a bug catcher here that I have. Filled with sand, but you don't want to have anything inside the bug catcher. So I'll empty the sand out into another container, and then what I'll do is I'll just take these little crates and put them inside of the bug catcher. And then you want to dig through carefully, dig through and see if there's any more beetles left in there. And then just take a handful and just pick out the millworms. It's just that simple, and then you put them back in here. After a while, I say, after maybe three to four cycles of them breeding and having uh, laying eggs and then your mealworms hatching, you're going to want to change out the oats. 
Why? Because it's going to end up giving you a stench from the the smell of the eggs and everything else, the poop and whatnot. So you just want to clean it out. So you could, I say stock up on a couple of uh, quick oats and that's pretty much it. And again, when it comes to feeding, you can give them, it's the same for the millworms, basically. You can give them fruit, veggies, and then they also eat the cricket calcium, the, the cricket flunkers high calcium cricket diet. They eat this as well. So I have a little uh, a little spot of it in there. So if they don't want to eat the apples and they start to roam around and they catch a whiff of that, they'll eat that. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you enjoyed, be sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you have not. Also, ring that bell to be notified when I upload. The website, I'm still working on the website. The website will be done very soon. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy your day. I'll catch you guys later.